Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful, beautiful day. The sky is blue, the clouds are out, the air is nice and warm. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. And then, you know what, even if it was a bad day, it's still a beautiful time. And you know what goes good with this? Some good words. Let me share with some words that I have that the Lord has placed upon my heart. I want us to look at John 20, 19 to 31. Isn't it strange when you think about it, the disciples spend that evening of Easter day behind locked doors. Peter and the other disciples seen the empty tomb. Mary Magdalene has spoken with the risen Christ and she had told the disciples about it. You'd think that they would be all celebrate, announcing to everyone who would listen that Jesus is alive again. Instead, they hid out. Well, on the other hand, protecting himself makes perfect sense. It was only a couple days before that they were traumatized by the death of Jesus on the cross. They knew that as he was apprehended and executed, and thus they waited behind locked doors as quietly as they can be fearing every footstep in the street below. Look, whether or not their attitude is justified, it appears that fear dominated them, that put them in the same group with so many other people. Those dominated by fear includes many of people we see around us every day, and even some of us here right now. See. These disciples had plenty of company when at eve of the first Easter day, waiting, fearing, keeping themselves inside locked room. Jesus had passed from life through a gruesome death to a life greater than we can ever imagine. So why does he appear to such as these? It might have been of anger, disappointment or a desire for revenge after all the disciples deserted him as he hung for hours on the cross and most of them were nowhere to be found jesus comes back not concerned for himself but for them he sensed a profound fear he says peace be with you. He showed them his wounds still appear in his glorified body. They fear dissolved and they rejoice to see him alive again. He gave them peace and their mission. He breathed the Holy Spirit on them and tells them to forgive sin with his authority from thus upstairs room. Forgiveness spread like wildfire, set free from fear themselves. So what is it in for us? The promise of our own resurrection at the end of time. And the reality of reunited with God and other people here and now. Like the first disciples, we experience Jesus risen from the dead freeing us from fear. So what are these fear we experience? Some are announced on the headlines. Illness from which no cure is known. A failing economy, war and rumors of war. Other fears are personal, more private. A bad medical report, a broken marriage, a career that crashed. We fear fear when there was no money to pay the mortgage. When our children report, report cards are a disaster. When we come back to find out our home was broken into, our possessions are rifled through. When fear flares up in our hearts, it is easy to forget God. But it is time to remember God. See, the disciples forgot 
for a time there in that upper room. We may forgive also, but Christ does not forget us. He comes to us with vivid reminders of his feet and his hands and his side. And the death, the source of much fear, had been conquered. See, the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And we also can rejoice when in the midst of fear, we recognize Jesus here with us. See, it's not that fear is simply swept away. Rather, fear no longer dominates our life. There is one who has shown himself more powerful and him we acknowledge as our Lord Jesus Christ. Still, all our examples is Thomas. Do you remember this Thomas? Early in the gospel story, as Jesus prepared to go to Jerusalem to face the cross, Thomas said, John eleven sixteen, let us go and we may die with him also. And when he heard from the others that Jesus is back again, he made this outrageous demand. He refused to believe that Jesus is alive unless he can see and touch the wounds of his crucified Lord. Thomas gets his chance when in the upper room, Jesus entered and says, peace and invites Thomas to examine his wounds. We hear the boldness statement about Jesus in the Gospel of John. My Lord, my God, shouted Tom. Thomas. Jesus returns to promise us on the resurrection. He comes back to reconcile us with God. And he comes to break the chains of fear. Look, we have different ways to recognize him. You can meet Jesus in scriptures and in the sacraments. You can meet him in love shown by you, by other Christians. You can meet him as well as the depths of your heart. Even at times you least expect this. Will you welcome him? Will you trust him? Jesus may come to you when you least expect it as the angel came to Joseph in Egypt while he sleeps. Jesus often slaughters us as he did to those disciples in the upper room and Thomas. He may come to you when you least expect him, even the secret deaths of your own soul. My brothers and sisters, this Easter season, Christ comes to set us free we can extend to him the chains of fear that holds us and he will break them by the power of the resurrection. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his countenance and gives you peace. Amen. Let me finish with this. You know, fear is is out there and and you should tell your testimony about how Jesus conquered your fear how Jesus took away your fear and, and made you more stronger so it's your testimony that helps helps others so my brothers and sisters today tomorrow when when you take that first step tell about your testimony so others can be encouraged amen have a wonderful and blessed day.